You may remember I did um, did a se series of videos uh, talking about Stewie2K, uh, you know, very popular player whose career sort of petered out towards the end. He seemed to become a bit, you know, petulant and and uh, not not very positive, you know, f focus in terms of what he wanted to do within Counter-Strike. And in the end, ended up in Valorant, but hasn't really made great strides over there as well. He's only 24, and it's kind of sad. So I did a series of videos about it, because ultimately, at the core of that issue is the fundamental NA attitude and how it interfaces with esports competitors. And basically, the NA attitude is one just absolutely mired in delusion. These people are delusional about their own abilities. They're delusional about their teammates' abilities. They're delusional about the expectations when it comes to salaries and, and, and you know, the, the, the expectations around training and working. And I've, I know, I've known, you, you know, american esports competitors for as long as i've been in you know i used to stay up and watch late night 1.6 and source games and eventually got to meet some of those players and then obviously was around them in cgs and you know and they're not not just obviously counter strike stuff met all the big starcraft ones as well and it's like listen the cycle always goes like this an esports starts americans say it's cool they all go into it they all, like, love playing. They grind out the hours, so they get good really quick. And then, like, they'll dominate, like, the first year, 18 months of a truly global esport where everyone can play. And then the money will come in, and the competition will come in, and the Europeans and, you know, South Americans and the Chinese and the Koreans will come in. And they've got something a bit more than just, we'll play the game loads because we find it fun, and you're paying us loads of money to do it. They've got something extra to them. I can't quite put my finger on it, and obviously it's different per region. You know, the Europeans, are, especially in team esports, are really known for their regimented structure. In Korea, it's like absolute you know attention to detail combined with relentless grinding you know those great korean starcraft champions would like they would leave a tournament not go to the after party and go back and grind the ladder all over again you know and and obviously in south south american teams particularly brazilians in valorant and counter-strike it's just hunger it's just hunger it's just pure hunger you know because all the problems that the country itself sort of has they see this as a very plausible route out of you know not just poverty but the potential to you know increase status within society get a platform do some good for a country they they love dearly and are very patriotic and passionate about and you know we saw that with fallen becoming world champions and all of that stuff so there are these differences uk and us the uk has similar attitudes uh, very similar attitudes to the US but the difference is the UK is a tiny little island and we've never really produced well anything really all been downhill since the English language right but, you know but anyway the NA cycle all, always ends up like being like a fucking high school you get these egos and and delusions and cliques and you create this environment and it's just not good for anyone. And, you know, when I was talking about the Stewie example, and obviously Freakazoid, and I st I've still asked him to come on the podcast, and he, he hasn't done it yet. But Freakazoid, is going to feature in this as well. Uh, another reason to get him on. I, I really hope he, he does agree to sort of do it, do it because uh, I'd like to talk to him about this sort of, you know, face-to-face -face instead of kind of like talking about him. But anyway, he said, actually, Stewie was in the right. Now, all that's happening there is that is a classic example of an NA player uncritically uh backing his boy up you know and that's fine i guess loyalty's good it's the notorious trait of freakazoid he was always super loyal to all the people he he played with but that loyalty to a fault uh is is certainly an issue when you go on to become an enabler for terrible attitudes and so that's one aspect of it but the other is just there's never a sort of clear and sober assessment of people's talents and actually how good were we and where were we in sort of you know the particular time and place like you know for example that sean gares cloud nine in retrospect wasn't really a great team you know but it was it was a popular team and it was a popular na team so it always boasted loads of fans it always boasted you know front page popularity and all of that stuff 
uh, on Reddit, and uh, you know, it all everyone wanted to interview them. They were very charismatic players. They were very well liked. All had popular, you know, little mini streams when they weren't like, practicing or pugging. And so, you know, you can understand why they were popular, but they were never that good, right? And that's just that's just real talk. But something happens in in the North American esports scene where it's like they do conflate popularity with success because I think so much about how they make their money is that way. And that was just an example the other day, and it was just like so textbook to everything you would ever need to know about the North American scene that it, it, it sort of blew me away. And this was basically, there was a stream, I believe it was Cooper that was, you know, streaming, they were playing uh, together, and um, Freakazoid basically said that Shroud was essentially better in some areas than Simple and could have been simple and i was like i saw this clip came across my timeline i think you know well well i think i'm getting it off jake lucky's uh, twitter account so thanks jake uh, saw you cut your hair the other day at the esports awards as well and at first i thought you know what freaks like got a really wry sense of humor there's no way he said it and meant it <laughs> right but he did <laughs> he, he said it and meant it and interestingly enough while most people went that's just absurd on its face because simple is the highest skill ceiling there has ever been in csgo bar none probably the highest skill ceiling sustained for the longest period of time as an individual uh, that's why he's the greatest of all time you could probably have like some debates you know but device won all them trophies fine happy to do it you know cold zero what about cold zero we can do all that but at the end of the day i think the general consensus is he's the best player to ever touch the game and the stats really bear that out even if the trophies don't so uh, i listened to the clip and uh yeah it was <laughs> it, 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 it you can you're about to hear it it was frighteningly genuine and earnest and it's a shame for ryan because listen we all have weird opinions about stuff right like and, and opinions that you could even probably go so far as to say they're empirically wrong when you say them on a stream and they get clipped and they go viral <laughs> suddenly your dog shit take is you know it's all about your reputation is on the line now and so i understand and he, he'll probably think i'm doing him a little bit dirty by talking about it but i do think it's illustrative of a bigger thing so I'm, and i'm going to talk about that and then i'm going to prove why simple is better and shroud is probably the most overrated player of all time i think we'll tie that all together so this is the clip in battlefield this is what I'll, this is what i'll say the shit that shroud could do in cs simple can never do that's what i'll say wait what Simple's very good oh, at taking stupid you're stupid simple is very good at taking one v ones shroud is equally as good in my opinion but the multi-fragging potential with shroud is way higher with him like if multiple guys are on your screen shroud has a chance of killing them way way better than simple why because I've seen him do it. That's literally an Andrew Tate take right there. No, it's not, because man. I've seen it. Yes. So okay. No, you, do you realize? Do you realize? Aspect. Do you realize that your takes are based off of your are experience with people? Are we talking about people, shroud versus right? simple right it's now? No, this I'm talking about rifling only. Yes. Yes, this is what I'm only. saying. So simple based talk. off of your, based off of how you give takes, you do it off your experience of playing with the player, right? And I'll be like, there. I don't know, but I listen to you because you play with the player. You guys have never played with him and seen what he does in scrims and then let alone fucking matches too. That's all I'm going to say, dude. So, so uh, yes, uh, this was the contention that, uh, if I understand Ryan's point, uh, he says that uh, Shroud is a better multi-fragger uh, than Simple. In particular, that's like his speciality. Uh, he was very good at being a, a uh, multi-fragger. And so I didn't know because I'm not mathematically minded, but I'm sure there is someone out there that could uh, that could do that. But I'm pretty sure if you were to look at the actual data, if you were to go and get the HLTV stats and you were to look at all the multi kills, I think there's a way to rip it. Like, I think it does record it like two kills in a round, three kills in a round. And if we were to, I don't know, because there's all context to this stuff. Like even if, 
you know, simple one. There's like, was the game harder back when Shroud was playing? Was it easier? The guns were different. The meta was different. You know, so there's all that stuff. But there's probably a way you could empirically prove that simple multi-frags more than Shroud. I'm almost certain that would be the case, statistically speaking. Now, I do remember Shroud having some, like, nasty highlights like you know obviously it wasn't totally dog shit or anything he was a player that was certainly capable the problem was and again this is another very typical na problem he had a pug mindset and when you get when you start playing in like europeans that are like he's gonna push i'll just sit here and wait for him he's gonna push that um, i'll sit here and wait for him i know that you know, he, he has this tendency, you have, you know, because we've watched the demos, we're not playing instinctive Counter-Strike, we're the regimented, boring Europeans, so, yep, he's going to be there, we're going to pre-nade that, we're going to pre-molly this, bish, bash, bosh, we're going to dorm them in the heads, and then we're going to win, we're going to win the game comfortably, you know, and it's like, a lot of North American players never grow out of the first stage of development. Uh, and that is that, you know, being a really, really, really effective pugger. That's like, you know, basically, like, if you think about the, the path to pro for Counter-Strike players, it's like, you hit global, right? Well done. You are now at the absolute lowest rung of the ladder. Anything below that, fuck you. You hit global. Then you join Face It or ESEA rank, you know, and then you grind that. Then... You might, if you're good enough, get invited to the individual ladders, but most likely you have to depend on entering a team into one of the smaller tournaments, hoping you stay together and you don't collapse long enough so you get noticed and get airlifted into an actual org. And then, now you're playing for a dog shit North American org, <laughs> right? Still a long way to go. So where shroud was for me he was really really good at the pug in thing got noticed really good networker had a very nice personality that everybody could agree with never really heard anyone say he was an arsehole on a team or anything like that down the years and that goes a long way in north america where everyone's like say little bitchy high school kids and then basically was able to parlay his way in uh you know top organizations and once you've done that the way it works in North America, once you smash through the glass ceiling, you can never slip back. There'll always be someone willing to write you a check. You have to be really bad to fail once you get there. Any team will pick you up. It doesn't matter how bad you are, you know? Just That's just how it works. So anyway, I think Empirically Simple's a better multi-fragger. He's certainly a much, much better player. But also, the argument that Freak was making where he said, you don't know because you haven't played with shroud and i've seen him play and i've seen him do those things but what blew my mind and this is how you know once again you're not really dealing with you know <laughs> even andrew tate would have caught this one guys ryan never played with simple so <laughs> so he's only got He's only got half the data he needs to make an assess to make an assertive assessment anyway right like, it just you just, you just, that's just it. That's all, That's the judo throw. You just do it with the argument. Well, I played with Shroud. Y yeah, but did you play with Simple? N oh, no. Okay, right. You never did. Right, well, get, guess guess your opinion's ill-informed or biased then, isn't it? By, by your rules, you know? So, thought that was really strange. But that isn't even the most delusional aspect to this story, right? Because it's like, look. Freak's probably just backing his boy. And, like, listen, Shroud's one of those guys where if, if you talk to an American, and I know he's Canadian, but, you know, if you talk to a North American, I will use the term American and North American interchangeably just to annoy all you Leafs in the chat. But, you know, if you talk to an American fan and talk to an American player, they will tell you absolutely, like, unironically to your face, they'll be like, yeah, everyone forgets about Shroud. <laughs> you talk to anyone else who followed Counter-Strike at that time in the world and they will tell you he's one of the most overrated players of all time. <laughs> but in, in America, everyone's like, oh yeah, he's, he was the GOAT that never really got his shine. He's too good. One of the best all-round FPS players. And, then he, and you're like, what? Yeah, and everyone else in the world just doesn't give him his flowers. It's like, bro, like we give him contextually the appropriate flowers that he earned in in his career. I feel that this tweet I saw, probably one of the most delusional things I've ever seen 
another player say about anything, right? And that was, in the aftermath, to try and, like, downplay, I guess, you know, like, oh, who's better, Shroud or Simple? Shroud decided he'd give us, like, tweet about it, right? He doesn't need to. He's a fucking multi-multi-millionaire. He doesn't even have to have any time for this at all. But, you know, whatever. It's Twitter. Everyone, everyone has an opinion. It's what it's there for. And he said this. A lot of it comes down to passion. I'll never be as passionate as Simple. Therefore, I'll never even come close to the talent he has, in my opinion. And loads of people were replying, right? And going, oh my god, wow. So nice of Shroud to pay Simple a compliment. Like, by the way, a compliment to Simple from Shroud. It's like, I don't know. It just doesn't mean anything, does it? Like, you know, it's like some busker with a full hat going up to, like, Jeff Bezos going, you know, yeah. we're sort of similar, aren't we? You know, like, be all, I suppose you are better with money than me. Like, yeah, no, no problem. It's just fucking meaningless, you know? But, and loads of people were like, W take, W take, you know, like, shoot, yeah, W, W. And the reality is, it's not. It's actually such a slimy, backhanded insult. It beggars belief that he typed that out and thought, and send. Right? What do you mean, Richard? Remember, I'm a media student. I read between the lines. I understand English. I know what's going on there. And basically what he said there is, right, is if I cared as much as Simple did, if I was a tryhard like Simple, I would have been as good as Simple. If I just cared. <laughs> and it's just insane. What a mad, insane thing to say. And it's there again, at the core of the NA mindset. We're the best. We're the most talented players. Just, you know, we got lives and stuff. The UK players do it too. You know, oh, you're a virgin. You're a virgin. You know, how many times have you had sex? Oh, yeah, you beat me in that 1v1. Doesn't matter how many times you've had sex. Poon Slayer 43. Doesn't fucking matter, son. We're in an esports tournament now. All the notches on your bedpost don't mean shit. I'm banging your head off on the server and I'm walking away with the check. Fuck you. You know what I mean? So, this. I, 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 like, I was aghast. I was like, Freak's take was pretty bad. This take's ten times worse. Because you, you were just never there, bro. Like, you were never there. Like, I, I don't know how to really lay it out. Like, for me, one of the reasons why when Thorin said, did that thing, when, oh, Duncan, <laughs> you so crazy. But when Duncan did that thing and said Fallen was the most overrated player of all time, loads of people were going to me. Like, yeah, I suppose you think it as well. Go on. You're just like him. You're the same as him. You and him are the same. Richard Thorin Leelds, the esports journalist historian. You just one homogenous mass with the same opinions. And I'm like, in no world is Fallen the most overrated player. Because <laughs> I live in the timeline where everyone sucks off Shroud. It's mental. <laughs> it's just like, this dude was so fucking mediocre at the majors. You know, yeah, he had some good series here and there, but like on the biggest stage this guy didn't get it done at all and you can blame it on the team da -da 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 -da. come on simple was fucking standing out when he played in that dog shit flip side team with a washed up markelov think he even played with shara didn't he i mean you know good players rise to the top so anyway this was just i i, I saw something similar when he came when he came into valorant he played at sentinels and he got absolutely pocketed, right? He had, like, one good map. <laughs> and everyone went on t Twitter, Shroud is bad! Like, everyone's addicted to Cloutium. It's just, whoa, give me that fucking Cloutium belt round their fucking arm. Whoa, Cloutium, I love it! Can't get enough of that fucking Cloutium in North American esports. In no perceivable way was it true. Like, when he played the guard, uh, Trent fucking destroyed him. Like... Like, it was like 0-12, like, it, uh, in terms of duels. Like, Trent won every single time he peaked into him, basically. So, just nonsense. Utter nonsense. But everyone has to pretend, because if someone's super popular in esports, in influencer culture, in streaming, you have to suck them off and pretend that you actually like them and they are amazing and let's fucking go and you have to reply to every tweet they make and then and then. And it's like, guys, I keep it real. This is a dog shit thing for an old school player to do with the current GOAT. 
I'm going to say it, to try and, like, be on the coattails. Like, it could have been me. It couldn't have been you, bro. It could never have been you. And I'll demonstrate it, right? I want to show you just a few little things, right? Because I don't think people realize the reality. Okay, what we'll do is we'll have a look at Simple's stats at the majors, right? Here it is. Hopefully you can see that and it's not, uh, it's not, too, it's not too small for you. What is this? A stream made for ants, right? This guy, and where the asterisk is, that's the old rating. They did go back and backdate loads of the old tournaments to 2.0 rating, right? And so, just for those who don't know, on the old 1.0 rating, if you got like 1.05, 1.06, that was pretty much, you know, that's above average and really, really good. Like, you know... Anything like a 1.2 on the old 1.0 rating was fucking mental, okay? In the 2.0 rating, like, mental is like, oh, I don't know, Stockholm, <laughs> where it was like the highest ever HLTV rating, I think, at, recorded at a major, 1.47, right? So here he is at all these majors. You will notice, never had a negative kill differential, Never had a negative HLTV rating. This includes when he played for fucking Hellraisers at DreamHack 2014, very much in the Shroud era, when he was a stand-in, essentially, for Liquid at these two majors that he did. Columbus and Cologne, obviously, we all remember fantastic performance at Columbus. Was there, got to see it. I even got to hang out with Simple at that one. We were talking about boxing tips in the green room. He just started boxing as a, as a young lad. So this guy has consistently turned up at every single major, right? You can see that. And not just turned up, not just done his job, but like actually excelled pretty much every time. Whether he's been a stand-in, whether he's been on a weaker team, whether he's been in one of the various iterations of Na'Vi, right the way through to obviously getting his major. One of the things I hate, I can spot him more on a mile off, because people do them shit nicknames, don't they, for Counter-Strike players. And anyone who calls Sompel, he calls him Sompel with a zero instead of a one, now that he's got his major, is a moron and cannot be saved. They should just be <laughs> sent off to their own own island <laughs> away from the rest of us it's a dog shit nickname it, like choco it just doesn't even work what's the other one i hate comedian for cadian that's dog shit cocadian would have been better because he's Aah! like you know doing that all the time like you're just not good with nicknames just it's like pezzy pezzy it's garbage like it's just garbage like anyway there's his major stats that's simple the go now let's move over and have a look at Shroud, the, the goat, right? The goat that never was. Let's look at his stats at the Major, shall we? Let's just see what they look like. Oh, well, immediately I can see some sort of difference, guys. I can see some sort of difference. I, I don't know, can, can anybody see the difference? Now, obviously, if you're colorblind, you actually can't. <laughs> so, for, for the colorblind, that's red. <laughs> they're, they're all red apart from two. Okay. So I want to make it absolutely clear, right? That he had a positive rating. And also I will include 0 0.98. And I'll even give him the 0 0.93. I, because they're all one. You know, the old HLTV rating. So they probably would come out at like bang on one-ish. Give or take. If they were adjusted. But he had a 1.01 rating here. Which is fine. It's okay. Nothing special. That was at Cologne. That's the best he ever performed at a major. These have been backdated and adjusted for HLTV2. The last two majors he played at. Including Columbus. When he was on Cloud9. He played uh, uh, He played 0 0.80. And at Krakow. Which if you remember. Right? Krakow was the major where Cloud9 were just sort of stamp, starting to, you know, ramp up a little bit and going through the cycles and blah, blah, blah. And eventually they make the changes and we all know what happened in Boston. Um, but, you know, this, again, 0 0.8. So just never, never did it on the higher stage. In fact, served up one of the worst performances you will ever see at a major. You would have to go and watch this demo to really appreciate how bad it was. For those who, of us who remember... 
Here it is. This is against Big at the Krakow. Again, this was an eminently wide open major. There's absolutely no reason Cloud9 couldn't have been dark horses at this one too, right? But this is where he went four for 22 against Big in a, in a 16-11 match and got 0 0.41. The jump bug doesn't make Shroud get four kills. Come, come on. Come on. Yes, this is where you could abuse that jump bug. And yeah, But you want to hear it again? I'll tell it you again. I only tell you the truth. That's why everyone hates me, right? Yes, Big Clan did abuse that bug. That bug was in the game for everyone. Why did no American teams find it? It's almost like they don't go on the server and try. It's almost like they don't experiment in their spare time. Meanwhile, Big had God B, a man who was never off the server. He's one of the finest minds in Counter-Strike and works unbelievably hard. He discovered that bug for his team and exploited it while it was available to exploit. And people saying it's cheating? Nah, it was no more cheating than when, you know, Munasee exploited a one-way smoke that he found while grinding his tits off and working hard. Point remains, that's one of the all-time worst performances at a major. Now, look, it's not just about majors, Richard. You're biased as fuck, aren't you? Right? Yeah, I am. That's true. Why don't we have a look at Simple's uh, accolades, right? You can see here. These are his, uh, these are his accolades, if you look. Um, I don't know. Yeah, okay. So you can see here, this is where it all starts. He was number four. You can actually, you can just see it up here. So he was in the top 20, where he was number four in 2016, number eight in 2017, number one in 2018, number two in 2019, number two in 2020, number one, of course, last year, and he's going to be number one again when HLTV does it at the end of, the, at end of this year, start of next year, right? But also, look at all these trophies he's got. Right, from all these tournaments he won and all different eras of the game all the while while being comfortably in the top uh, five players in the world with one rare aberration now let's contrast that with the goat that never was shroud don't worry it's not a loading error <laughs> we're not waiting for the icons to turn up they're just not there he won one esl pro league <laughs> in his entire playing career Never in the top 20, not once, never close to it. Even Skadoodle got into the top 20. Uh, I hate to break it to him and to anyone else. That gulf in talent, right? <laughs> that unbelievable gulf in talent and achievement. You don't, it's not a passion thing. <laughs> it simply isn't a passion thing. You don't go, ah, oh, well try just a little bit harder and suddenly all of those things happen you know there's this weird fucked up idea and it's like loads of people year upon year try and prove that like talent doesn't exist <laughs> like it's the big thing no everybody can get to the very top by nothing but hard work and it's like, it's never like that there's always something mercurial about the great players in any sport and yeah turns out a lot of them do work like psychos but some of them don't work like psychos some of them it's like i don't know they've just been touched by something beyond this realm that you can never understand you know think about think about maradona do you think he was a hard trainer you know do you think he looked after his body <laughs> no he did a wings of redemption maradona before wings of redemption was born he beat one of them gastric sleeves he beat it he fucking beat it he beat the sleeve was he the greatest footballer of all time yeah you tell me how that happens. I don't know. It sucks if you're the guy who works really hard and you don't get to be Maradona. You don't even get to be Peter Crouch. You know? It sucks. But there's something else at work. And it certainly isn't just fucking uh, passion. You know what I mean? It can make a difference, but not the difference here. Not what you're talking about. Here's why it matters, right? Because to the Zoomers, they don't know. In, in Valorant... They all think Shroud was really, really good in Counter-Strike and, like, one of the top players. And it's just a shame he was too old and, you know, well, he never really got to... He could have done something in Valorant because he was so good in Counter-Strike. They don't know different. They don't come and look at the history of the game. And it even happens for young players in Counter-Strike as well. I mean, 
this is like one of the saddest Reddit threads I've ever seen, right? Simple versus Shroud. I think they even made a thumbnail for it. <laughs> I, I love the effort, you know, but this is not a debate. Oh, when it comes to breathing, what's better? Uh, oxygen or existing in a total vacuum? <laughs> Who knows? Let's, it's just like, it's one of them, like, it's just, it just, but anyway, this poor Zuma, uh, said, it is a big discussion, it's not, the science is settled on this one, okay, <laughs> okay, respect the science, it's a big discussion started yesterday on Doc's stream, right, so I'm, I'm already sad as fuck, right, Doc, remember, is that football manager regen kid that came out of nowhere with loads of suspicious pals and connections, loads of suspicious backstories, who's really, really good in face it, uh, did okay at a couple of small lands with a pug team, but definitely will never go pro for, for any reason whatsoever, and streams, and because teenagers really fall for that aspirational asp aspect, like change, he's just like me, for real, for real, he's like me, right? They all stand for him like his opinion matters. Doc, Doc's opinion on who is the greatest competitive player of all time is worthless. It's as worthless as any other, you know, person that just has CSGO installed on the computer. Worthless. It doesn't mean anything. He wasn't even there. <laughs> wasn't even there for it. Like, didn't even watch the games. So, it was a big discussion started on Doc's stream. What a fucking meeting of minds there must be going on in that community. And it said... Shroud no longer plays in the pro scene, I know, but he excels at every game he touches. He's really good at picking up pub games and stomping in them. Yeah, no doubt about that. So much so, we've all seen those ludicrous, like, Shroud's cheating videos. It's just nonsense. Just, he's cheating. According to those dudes, he, every time he moves to a new game, he gets a brand new private cheat for it. And that never gets caught. <laughs> and no matter the game, no matter what engine it's on. And he, and he does it for money that he absolutely doesn't need. That's their theory. That's their working theory. So He excels at every game he touches. Shroud is an incredibly gifted player. We also remember how he played CS when he played in Cloud9. Yeah, we just saw that, mate. <laughs> I don't think you were there. I think you're having a little fib. I think, I think you're like 17. And I don't think you were anywhere near Shroud when he played. And for me, the question is really relevant. Couldn't be less relevant. Do you think Shroud would be top one it's just it's like the parameters of the debate like don't even make sense like would he just be one like not would he be in the top 10 would he be good would he be one would he be, would be top one in the world right now if he continued to play cs or simple is still better in this way thinking emoji and it's been downvoted into oblivion, thank God. But this is why it matters. That Zuma thinks, yeah, Shroud's in the conversation. Not in the conversation, like literally. I'm pretty sure if I actually tried, I could definitively come up with 50 better players than Shroud that played CS across all the eras, list them, explain why, right? He just wouldn't get anywhere near it. Yeah, <laughs> only 50. I've probably been generous with 50, so... I don't know. It's sad because it's not even like he's a... I don't think he's a bad guy or whatever, but once you've come through that, like, NA school of, like, arrogance and conceit and, and, and ego and everyone's bigging you up and gassing you up and saying how good you are, and then you go on to succeed outside of it, and now you've got all this money, it's like, it probably eats him up inside a little bit that his legacy, like, there's people, you know, around that actually were there that get to say, Shaw wasn't that good. Right, you know, we're not we're not dead yet. The boomers aren't dead. The boomers that saw you play, yeah, our beards are grey as fuck these days, but we still saw it, and we're still going to tell people exactly what you were, which was you were an above average NA player who had a really good reputation because that that probably you didn't deserve because you had a couple of flashy highlight plays, one really good series against Fnatic, and uh, loads of people in the NA scene swearing blind you could turn fucking water into wine when, you know, at best you turn water into piss like everyone else. Maybe really nice, clear piss. So uh, I did, I, I'll end it on a on a fun note.
I did uh, enjoy this. Cooper had some, like, just brilliant memes. And he was tweeting about this all, all the time. You've all seen the famous uh, Ronaldo Messi picture that was made for the World Cup. Well, that is just... It's just too good. It's just too good. Shroud versus Simple. In the battle. The never-ending battle to see who's the, who's the GOAT. Just incredible scenes. Maybe, Griff, you might want to incorporate this into the thumbnail. Maybe with my head over Simple's in the ultimate act of hypocrisy. How dare you disrespect the GOAT, Shroud? Now let me put my fat head over the GOATs of CSGO. And then Simple will watch it. And then he'll go look at this pig. And just Moret's curse will be lifted. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Look, it's, for me, just a silly little thing that's really illustrative of everything wrong with the NA scene in a nutshell. The the fevered egos and, and everything else. So, you know, look. No. No, he wasn't close. Sorry. Sorry, Shroud. Sorry, NA fans. Sorry, Zoomers.